Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Harding, Counter Spy, calling Washington. United States counter spies, especially appointed to investigate and combat the enemies of our country, both at home and abroad. Tonight, the case of the Carbon Consul. Must you walk so slowly? Lydia, this African sun's the hottest I've been under during the whole world cruise. I'm not going to run in it. Well, we'll never see the native quarter at this rate. I didn't want to see it in the first place. You never want to see anything except the bottom of a highball glass. Well, what's so wonderful about this section? It's dirty, hot, and the natives aren't exactly smiling at us. Oh, you're just imagining things. Besides, this is atmosphere. Yeah, uh, so I smell... I still say, watch where you're going. Oh, excuse me, I didn't look where I was going. And doesn't the white lady have eyes? Well, I was just... Or perhaps the walks of my native to Barcelona are not wide enough. I should step in the streets to allow the grand lady to pass. Look, my wife apologized. How gracious to a poor, humble native that the American should demean himself so. Well, I never... Come on, Lydia, let's get out of here. (laughs) Yes, please. This is our land. Africa for the Africans. Well, I never. Horace, are you going to let him get... Keep quiet and keep walking. Hmm? I told you the natives weren't really smiling. It was just an accident. Yeah, that fellow was looking for trouble. See, he's got a crowd around him with him. He's haranguing them. He's pointing at us. Come on, Lydia. We've got to get the American consulate. Horace, they're coming after us. Watch out, Lydia. They're going to throw things. Horace. Oh, my friend. Come on, Lydia. This way. One. That's just the way it was, Mr. Burton. The whole thing started from Mrs. Walters bumping into the native. I see. And then the brute started shouting at me as though I'd attacked him. I was never so frightened in my life. I still haven't got my breath back. And the stress... I'll I... see that restitution is made for the damage, Mrs. Walters. The devil and... were that, man. You're the American consul here in this heaven-forsaken country. Can't you see that American citizens are afforded some protection? We do our best, Mr. Walters. If we hadn't reached the consulate grounds, we, we, we might have been killed. Mr. Walters... I'll enter a formal protest to the government of Tubasola. All right, and by gosh, you tell them that if they can't keep law and order here, we'll come over and do it for them. I know how you feel. Uh, Mrs. Walters, I'll want you to dictate a formal statement of what happened to my secretary. I certainly will, and I remember everything. You read Mr. Burton? She's one of them. Uh, She's Mrs. A- Walters, please. Uh- Orissa, there's been another anti-American outbreak. Mr. and Mrs. Walters here were the targets of it. I want you to take down their statement of the incident. Yes, Mr. Burton. Make several copies. I'll want one each for the authorities here, President Dinard and Police Chief Menaka. And, of course, be sure to send a copy to the African desk of the State Department, Washington. They may want to take drastic action. If Mr. Peters is in the counter spy statistical department, will he please report to Mr. Harding immediately? If Mr. Peters is in the counter spy statistical department, will he please... Mr. Hardy, I didn't think you'd gotten back from the State Department so quickly. Everything happens quickly these days, Peter. More trouble overseas? Yes. Asia? This time, Africa. But it's all part of the same picture. Tabasso Land, one of the few non-colonial countries on that continent. Oh, yes, the papers yesterday. Anti-American riots. Yeah, bad for us. Is the State Department going to take any action, Chief? Well, they may have to eventually. But first, they want to get a better picture of what's happening in that country. So? So, Peters, I want you to go through the personnel records of all our counter-spy agents. 
Extract the records of all our Negro agents. Get them here as soon as possible. Okay, Chief. We've got to work fast. The State Department wants to find out whether this anti-American feeling is foreign-inspired before they're forced to make any more protests to the government of Devasalan. President Dinar, my country has asked me as consul to hand you as head of the government of Tabasalan this note, formally protesting the treatment of our nationals in your country. I accept the note, Mr. Burton, with regret, and assure you that we will do all in our power to apprehend and punish the instigators of this disorder. And now, Mr. President, may I presume to be less formal? Yes, of course, Mr. Burton. And uh, unofficial? Yes. While awaiting your arrival, I've been talking to your state police chief, Menaka, here. He has some interesting ideas. I'm sure he has. I have only tried to be helpful, Mr. President. I see, Menaka. Now, these uh, interesting ideas, uh, what are they? I prefer that you hear them from the lips of Mr. Burton. He may give them more weight than a mere police official can. Your modesty is most unusual, Menaka. Uh, go on, Mr. Burton. Well, as your chief explains it, Mr. President, the main difficulty of law enforcement here is one of uh, uh, tools. The weapons, you mean? Yes, Mr. President. I can hardly agree, Menaka. It was one man who incited this riot. Surely, if you find him, it will take no more than one weapon to arrest him. Admitted, Mr. President, but one man is but a single grain in the sands of unrest that surround us. Had I weapons, an efficient police force, I would soon quell this anti-Americanism in our country. The force quells nothing. Or do you agree with my chief, Mr. Burton? Well, after all, when I came here to take up my consular post a year ago, I was kidnapped held for five hours by insurgents. Yes, that is a painful reminder, Mr. Burton. It might well have developed into a serious international incident if it hadn't been for my prompt liberation by Chief Menaka here and his officers. I know that, Mr. Burton, and I was grateful to you for minimizing the affair to your government. Then why not listen to Mr. Burton's advice now? You both urge me to request the United States government uh, to send us arms and possibly even advisors to help us administer the internal security of Tabasu land. Is that it? Exactly, Mr. President. Do that and we will be able to cope with any disorders that arise, no matter how grave they may be. I'm afraid I must still disagree with you, gentlemen. But we... I am well aware that there is much discontent in the country and that in some manner that discontent has been channeled against America, Mr. Burton. In that case, why Importing won't... American arms and advisors would do nothing but crystallize the unrest. Put your country in the light of an invader. No. No, Mr. Burton, before I take any such step, I want to discover the reason for this sudden upsurge. This hatred many of my people have for all that is American. If you or your government can assist us in this, I will gladly accept your help. That, Mr. Burton, you can report to Washington. This way, Carter. Right behind you, Mr. Peters. Mr. Harding, this is Agent Lincoln Carter. How do you do, Carter? Hello, Mr. Harding. Have a seat. Oh, thank you. Uh, will you want me, Chief? Uh, no, Peters. I'd rather have you set about arranging the details of Carter's transportation, if you will. I'll get right on it, Mr. Harding. <laughs> Doesn't sound as though I'm going to be in Washington very long, Mr. Harding. No, you won't be, Carter. Not if you're the right man for this job we have. I hope I am, sir. Oh, uh, let's see. According to your personnel record, you went to Howard University. Got a B.A. and M.A. there. That's right. Then you did postgraduate work at Columbia, earning the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, huh? Yes, sir. Your thesis for your doctorate was on African languages and dialects. Is that correct? Correct, Mr. Harding, but... You, uh, speak these various dialects? Many of them. The study of African culture and history has been sort of a hobby with me. Uh -huh. Something like a Mayflower descendant tracing his antecedents. <laughs> yeah, I see. Well, tell me... 
Do you know much about the country of Tabasuland? If it doesn't sound too immodest, quite a bit. As one of the few Negro republics outside of Liberia, I've naturally been interested in it. Yes, so is the State Department. Yes, uh, I know. I've been reading in the papers about the recent outbreaks of anti-Americanism there. You have any opinions on that? Well, frankly, I, I, I've been puzzled. The history of that country has always oriented it toward America. We've helped and aided her in many ways. Why this sudden outburst should occur is beyond me. Now come over here, Carter. <clears throat> Take a look at this map. Hmm? Let's consider the question from the viewpoint of geography. Hmm. What do you mean? Well, Tabasso land could be the eastern doorway to Africa. A foothold there. And any power from the east could gradually spread throughout the entire continent. Oh, you think Russia Now, might, thinking uh... is unimportant. It's knowledge that counts. As if the State Department's suspicions are true, it means a reformulation of our policy in that area of the world. I can understand that, sir. And it's going to be up to you, Carter, to find out if those suspicions are true. The job you were speaking of? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, you'll work undercover among the citizens of Tabasa Land. I want you to find out and report where this anti-American feeling is arising from. Uh, and whether it's being provoked deliberately. I see, sir. Now, because of the nature of communications in the country, you'll have to transmit your reports by diplomatic pouch. Uh, through the consul there? Yes, that's right. He'll be notified to allow you the use of the pouch. Well, what about identification? Will I carry any with me? No, except for one simple device to establish your first contact with the consul. Mm, what will that be, sir? This pencil. Now, wait. I'll break it. There. You take this half. Right, sir. I'll see that our consul in Tabasaland gets the other half. When you present the matching half, that will be your identification. Then I take it I'm not to report to the consul immediately. No. In fact, don't get in touch with him until you've compiled as complete a report as you can on the situation. Yes, sir. Frankly, Carter, if what we suspect is true, your usefulness will be very short-lived after that first report, because the other side has espionage agents as well. I understand, Mr. Harding. Now, I know I don't have to stress the importance of this mission to you, Carter. So, good luck. And remember, take no unnecessary chances. You may be facing a crafty and dangerous enemy. You are listening to the case of the Carbon Consul on Counter Spy. Now, back to Counter Spy. Yes? I would speak to the American consul. Just like that? Do you think the American consul speaks to any native who walks in from the street? He will speak with me, woman. Indeed. Then in that case, what name shall I announce? None. None? You haven't even got a name? No one much less tongue than you have. Take this to your master, woman. He will see me at once. A stub of a pencil. Hardly an impressive introduction. Must I beg you to take it into Mr. Burton? I would Please, not. Please, woman, take it to him. It is most urgent. Very well. Sir? Yes? In here. Oh, thank you. This is the man, Mr. Burton. Thank you, Arissa. You may leave. Your secretary is a very efficient watchdog, Mr. Burton. Orissa, a treasure. A native girl who went to college in the States. Indispensable to me. I'm sure she is. But enough of that. It's a relief to learn that you finally arrived, Mr. Carter. And I've been here in Tubasa Land nearly four weeks. Well, since I got that pencil stub and the note from Mr. Harding, I've expected you for every day of those four weeks. I had no reason to contact you before. You have now? I think so. I've made a report of my activities these past four weeks, and as Mr. Harding undoubtedly explained, I am to submit it to Washington through your diplomatic pouch. Yes, I know. I have dispatches to send out myself. I'll have Arissa bring it in now. It'll be leaving in the morning. I'm glad of that, Mr. Burton. You, uh, uncovered something of importance? I think so. Uh, 
You, of course, are free to read the report, Mr. Burton. Thank you. I shall. You rang, Mr. Burton? Uh, yes. Uh, bring in the diplomatic pouch, please. Yes, Mr. Burton. Now, Mr. Carter, is there any other way I can be of assistance to your mission? At the moment, no. Well, suppose I have occasion to get in touch with you. You shouldn't have, but if you do, I'm staying at a small shack, number 13 Garden Alley. The pouch, Mr. Burton. Oh, thank you, Arissa. Arissa, in the future, when this gentleman calls, he's to be admitted immediately. Yes, Mr. Burton. I'll make certain he's admitted in the future. That is, if I come anymore. Well, don't tell me your first call is to be your last. It may well be, Mr. Burton. It may well be. Hello. It is Police Chief Manaka who speaks. Oh, yes. I see. He knows much. Uh, bad. What you know where he is. Excellent. The address? 13 Garden Alley. It will be taken care of immediately. Goodbye. Banada. Uh, yes, Chief Manaka. There is work for you. More Americans arriving in our land? Yes. It will be simple. Each successive riot becomes easier to incite. I only hope they are as apt targets as those Walters tourists were. This is not work for a sharp tongue, but a sharp blade. Blade? Yes. This American is no tourist, but a spy and of our color. Oh? He must die. There will undoubtedly be a great uproar on his death. So it will be best if you take to the jungles after the job is done. Yes, Manaka. I will get word to you when it is safe to return. As you say. Now take your blade and call on the man. His address is 13 Garden Alley. <laughs> Kerosene lamps. Huh, there. I phoned it. Well, I brought only two feet in with me. Yet I see two more peeking from beneath that curtain. Very tiny feet, too. I suggest the owner of them come out before I put a bullet through that curtain. Orissa, such a pleasure and a surprise. Seems I won't need my gun after all. Hardly. Uh, come a little closer to the lamp, please. The flickering kerosene light scarcely does you justice. To what do I owe the pleasure of this visit? Curiosity. A woman has much of that still. You were expecting somebody? No. Well, I certainly wasn't. We shall see. The American dog! Look out tonight! No, you don't! Watch out! I will cut your heart out! Not yet, you won't! The lamp! It's falling! Uh, what the devil? Horissa. Mr. Burton, that man who called on you today. What about him? What are you doing here at this time of night? I passed the place where he was staying. His shack is in flames. The whole native quarter is going up. I thought... You thought right, girl. Come in. I didn't know whether or not... Call Chief Manaka. Tell him about the fire. Say I'll meet him there and explain everything. This may have grave international repercussions. Mr. Burton. What happened? Marissa said there was a fire, but this a whole block burned to the ground. Our native quarters do not resist fire very well. An obvious statement. Fortunately, we have it under control now. The drums, the chanting, what are they for? To appease the fire gods. Many of my countrymen still place their fate in the ancient customs of their fathers. I myself prefer water to fight fire. Mm. Well, at the moment, the drums are useful. I think we can talk safely under their cover. We can, Burton. And we have nothing to fear. The counter-spy agent is dead? Yes. We recovered his body. 
Banada's knife deep in his heart. You have a most efficient sergeant, Banaka. Your country, and I don't mean America... Naturally. ...will pay well for this, I hope. Extremely well. What about the report you told me about over the telephone? Will that reach the counter spy chief? I shall see that it does. <laughs> but it'll be my version of what's happening in this country, not his agent's. <laughs> Good. And that coupled with the death of this agent will force President Denard to request American arms and men. And that should provide you with a revolutionary situation that you can exploit to the utmost. <laughs> and I shall, Mr. Burton. As long as you continue to make it worth my while. I'll continue. With good fortune and a little effort, we may be able to turn this incident into a long and costly guerrilla war involving the great United States. Mr. Burton? Oh, Harissa, I'm glad you waited here. The fire, was anyone... His body was found in the shack, uh, the man who was here. Oh. Get a pencil and paper, please. I want to dictate a cablegram immediately. The address is Mr. David Harding, Counter Spy Headquarters, Washington, D.C. Mr. Harding! Mr. Harding! Oh, you made good time, Peters. Did you get all the material? Here it is in this envelope, Chief. The complete personnel records of all employees at our Tabasalan Consular Office. Good. Now, I don't know how long I'll be gone, so you take over from me here. Right, Chief. If anything urgent comes up, get in touch with me through the consulate. All right, sir. And good luck. I hope you manage to make someone pay for Carter's death. I intend to, Peters. So long, Chief. Mr. Harding? Yes, that's right. Mr. Burton? Uh, yes, sir. I have a car right over here. Good. We'll go direct to my office, unless you'd rather pay your respects to the foreign office of Tabasoland first. Uh, no, Mr. Burton, your office first. I want to interview all the employees there before taking any other action. And this, Mr. Harding, is the only employee left to interview. My personal secretary, Orissa. How do you do, miss? You'll be seated. Thank you. I uh, imagine you want this to be private. If you don't mind, Mr. Burton. Not at all, Mr. Harding. I'll be outside if you want me. Now, Miss Orissa, let's talk about how you were so opportunely on hand for the fire that killed our counter spy agent, Mr. Carter. Uh, Mr. Burton. Yes? I have finished here. I wonder if you could arrange an audience for me with the president and the police chief of Tobasaland. Right away, Mr. Harding. Will you, uh, want me there? Yes, Mr. Burton. I definitely want you there. Mr. Harding, I can only express my deep regret at the death of your man. It will only add more fuel to the strain between our two countries. Perhaps not, Mr. President. Oh? You're aware of what Mr. Carter's mission here was. To investigate the rise of feeling against the United States among my countrymen? Yes, that's right. Had he made any reports to you before this tragedy? One, which I read just this morning. May we inquire as to his findings, Mr. Harding? Of course, Chief Monaga. He reported that the hatred of the United States arose out of local circumstances, that there was no outside provocation and recommended that the United States aid your country in dealing with this by sending weapons and advisors. You see, Mr. President, it is as I and Mr. Burton have been saying. I cannot believe it. I know how you must feel, Mr. President, but when his conclusion is the same as ours, nothing remains for you but to take our advice. I wouldn't say that, Mr. Burton. What do you mean? You see, the report I read was not written by my agent Carter. What? That's right, Chief Monaka. Then who was it written by? Mr. Burton, our eminent American consul. Me? That's right, Mr. Burton, and I've got two witnesses to that fact. All right, Orissa, come in and bring the gentleman with you. 
Hello, Mr. Burton. Carter. That's right, Mr. Burton. Mr. Harding, Burton's got a gun. Look out, Chino. No, you don't. Oh, oh. Carter, say about him. He's out cold, Mr. Harding. You attacked him, your own consul? Yes, Mr. President, but he was not the real American consul. I don't understand. You remember, Mr. President, Burton was abducted briefly when he first arrived here. I guess. And I... rescued by your chief, Menaka. Mr. Harding. The game's up, Menaka. You were assisting another foreign power, the power whom the so-called Burton was spying for. Well, you can't... You sent that man to kill me, Chief Menaka. Orissa recognized him as Sergeant Bonata, a member of your own police force. And when Carter killed him instead and the fire started, he decided to use that fact as a trap for you and Burton. But how did Carter know Burton was on the other side? Because Burton was the only one besides Orissa who knew Carter's address. You will never... Stop him, Carter! You're not getting away! <laughs> Let go! Well, you've got a nice right there, Carter. Mr. President, Menaka is a citizen of your country. I'm sure you'll know how to deal with him. I will, Mr. Harding, but uh, please, one more point. Yes. If Menaka and Burton were the instigators of the anti-Americanism, why did they keep insisting on my seeking your country's aid in suppressing that feeling? Because they were aware, Mr. President, that once such a policy was started, we would have to keep sending more aid and more arms. It would have been another drain on America's might, and there's nothing the power he represented would like better than drain off our strength to weaken us for any major conflict that may eventually come. Well, this at least is one spot where they failed in that strategy, and we'll see that they fail again. Tonight's counter-spy program originated in New York, was directed by Marks B. Loeb, dramatized by Palmer Thompson, and featured Don McLaughlin and Mandel Kramer. Counter-Spy is produced by Phillips H. Lord. Three chimes mean good times on NBC.